What is biopunk? It's a subgenre of science fiction that's derived from cyberpunk, but focuses on the implications of biotechnology rather than information technology. Where in cyberpunk, its characters are usually modified with technology, while in biopunk, individuals are enhanced by genetic manipulation of their chromosomes. Biopunk started emerging following the discovery of recombinant DNA, where it typically covers the struggles of individuals or civilizations who are often, with the misuse of biotechnologies, the product of human experimentation, profiteering or social control. So today I thought I'd make a video focusing on biopunk science fiction. Director David Cronenberg's action horror Existens Set in an alternative reality where society worships organic game designers like superstars, to a level where fanatics actually attempt to assassinate them. The story follows Allegra and her novice security guard, who are on the run from these assassins that want to stop her newest creation. Existence is an intriguing thriller that pulls you into a highly strange universe, which leaves you asking more and more questions where it's full of quirky twists and turns. It's definitely worth a watch for its creative use of organic materials and its gripping atmosphere of mystery. While the second half of the movie does feel a little bit rushed, its cliffhanger ending will undoubtedly keep you guessing. Director Stephen Wang's action thriller, Giver, Dark Hero follows Sean Barker, who is the unwilling host to an alien bio-armor known as the Giver, where he is trying to find out why the Giver unit forces him to fight and kill. A lead from TV has him traveling to an archaeological site where scientists have discovered an ancient spacecraft that could hold the secrets to the Giver's origin. The live-action version of the anime of the same name is a pretty low-budget B-movie, but that doesn't stop it from kicking ass with some pretty solid fight choreography. While being an okay representation of the Giver series, it has its flaws, however, it's still pretty good. My biggest problem with the film isn't the cheesy dialogue, but the sound design, where I swear one of the bad guys sounds like an angry cat. <laughs> Director Michael Winterbottom's romance drama, Code 46. Set in the not-so-distant future, where in a totalitarian Shanghai, cloning is a very popular form of procreation. The story follows an investigator from Seattle who travels to Shanghai to investigate a counterfeiter of passports, where he ends up the perpetrator of an ethical crime called a Code 46. In a future where things are complicated, but not in a conventional way, this is one of those movies in which the plot is almost secondary, where Code 46 works by focusing on the relationship between its two leads, in which it's backed by an atmospheric dark portrayal of the future. This is definitely not a popcorn movie, where you really have to be in the right mindset to watch this, otherwise there's a high chance you just won't like it. Director David Cronenberg's horror drama, The Fly Follows Seth Brundle, a self-involved research scientist, who invites a science magazine reporter to his lab, where he prepares to demonstrate his telepod, which can theoretically transfer matter through space. But after one of his experiments goes horribly wrong, Seth starts to transform into something not quite human. One of David Cronenberg's finest works, despite its slow start, The Fly is a solid horror that has strongly developed characters and great practical effects that still hold up today. For a movie about a man fly, surprisingly enough it has a sad narrative that focuses on a tragic love story with characters that you can relate to. If you don't mind gore, then I strongly recommend this film. Director Miguel Sapochnik's crime action, Repo Men. Set in the near future where a company called The Union has technology that can extend and improve human lives by using sophisticated and expensive mechanical organs. The catch is these life-changing artificial organs can be bought on credit, where if you can't make the payments on time, they get repossessed. With a straightforward plot and some very graphic scenes, there's something quite creepy about Repo Men, in that if a corporation could get away with repossessing organs, they'd probably do it. With some great action, interesting characters, and a controversial twist at the end, this is a fun, gory film that's full of shocks that will have you thinking about it for many hours. Director Roland Emmerich's action-adventure, Universal Soldier When a nosy reporter investigates a mysterious team of soldiers with unusual physical abilities, she decides it's a good idea to follow them, where she accidentally uncovers their big secret, which is that the army have been reanimating dead soldiers as obedient cyborgs. While the plot is pretty basic and predictable, it's not necessarily a bad thing in this case, as it equates to more action. 
While their acting is pretty bad, Van Damme and Lundgren are perfectly cast as emotionless cyborgs. Okay, it's not a masterpiece by any stretch, but it's still universally watchable. As far as silly action movies go, Universal Soldier's action is big, loud and well choreographed. It's a fun film, which is a must-see for people who love 90s action movies. Director Enki Balau's crime action, Immortal. In the year 2095, Earth is occupied by genetically altered humans, aliens and gods, where the ancient Egyptian gods have returned to Earth to cast judgement on the god Horus. Given only one week to preserve his immortality, Horus must find a human host to help him continue his legacy. Based on the graphic novel Gods and Chaos, this film has a great concept where its plot is pretty intriguing, although hard to follow at times. While the mix of animated and real characters does take some getting used to, it's still a very stylistic and artistic movie. But if you hate outdated console graphics, then I would probably give this a miss, otherwise it's a very original film that's worth at least one viewing. Director Paul W.S. Anderson's action horror, Resident Evil. The Umbrella Corporation, one of the most powerful companies in the world, has a secret underground lab called The Hive, where rival weapons are made. When The Hive's AI shuts down the facility for an unknown reason, a commando team is assigned to infiltrate The Hive to find out what exactly happened. Very loosely based on the Resident Evil game franchise, this film is very fast paced where a major disaster happens, all the characters are introduced and the entire premise of the movie is all explained within the first 20 minutes. While it doesn't have the best acting, its mindless fun and jump scares should entertain you. That combined with a rather elaborate set design that sets the dark mood well for this atmospheric horror. Hey, if you guys are new here to channel Hyperdrive, then make sure you hit the subscribe button to get notified on my next video release. And if you really enjoyed the video, do me a massive favour and drop a like. And I will catch you guys later.